sports retouching tutorial 2024 let's get right into it so if you have your mask right here if you don't know how to mask i can link a great tutorial in the description and i will have a new masking tutorial on the way for 2024. if it's just a png and you don't see this dark black icon what you need to do is you need to control click or command if you're on mac click this image right here and then you're gonna hit the layer mask icon right there so you made a layer mask so what i like to do to stay organized once we start getting into the thick of camera and you know making the adjustments is putting everything inside of a group you're gonna click command and then hit this plus icon so that we can add a layer beneath the mask layer all right so command or control click that plus sign and then let's just add a solid color that's going to give us a contrasting background to the mask that we have so i'll just pick something that's like dark just that so we have something back there now usually you know if you want to add hue and saturation or lightness see how it's affecting everything well there's two options that you can use and i'm going to show you the better option but i'll show you both options so when you are putting adjustments on a mask you want to clip them so how did i clip it i hold down alt or option and then i click and i see, you see this little arrow right here that's beneath the layer the adjustment that is where you click to clip things onto just the layer so now it's affecting only the layer that you want it to affect that's a clipping mask what i would prefer that you do when we start making adjustments it will be really easy and simple because if you want to keep adding adjustments you got to keep clip clipping and clipping and clipping or it's going to affect the background or the layers beneath that what i'm going to show you is you're going to add a group you're going to make this mask control the group see that right there so now move this layer into the group and this is going to be the whole kawaii adjustment layer all right and if you ever want to duplicate a mask you hold down alt or option and then you click drag and see you can move a mask to a different area and duplicate it the first thing that i like to do when i have a mask is make it a smart object so you're going to right click convert it to a smart object and what a smart object does is it lets you go back on the adjustments that you have made to the layer so that you can look at those adjustments edit the adjustments if you would like if you don't have a smart object filter once you make an adjustment it's final so first thing let's do let's go to camera off camera off filter and we have Kawhi Leonard right here what I like to do first is usually add a little bit of clarity just a pop a little bit of clarity you don't want to go too crazy Try to stay a little try to stay below 25 for most cases looking at that i see you know we can add like 15 for my texture just really look at your subject and see how much texture you want and it also depends on your retouching style everybody has re different retouching styles texture i'll put it up to like 15. so that's the first two things i usually like to look at and do Next, I like to try to see what I can eliminate from the mask. So go to your color mixer, hit the drop down, and I'm looking at this image and I see that there might be a lot of color within the actual black part of the jersey because the jersey's not truly black. Once you make the jersey truly black, that'll bring out a better look to the player retouching or photo retouch. So let's just drop the purples and see it's affecting the blue. So I might hold off let's drop it magentas let's drop greens to no saturation aquas we can drop the saturation and it's not affecting the blue of the jersey too much and that's good for right now what i also like to do is look at the oranges skin is usually going to be within your reds and oranges right so reds that is really the reds of the jersey but oranges see orange is a skin color it's a very similar skin color sometimes i'll boost the oranges or i'll go to the hue and I'll adjust the oranges just a little bit, maybe make it a little bit more red so it's not favoring yellow. I just often find that ha that having that yellow skin tone can drown out an image. Well, I'm moving the oranges a little bit to the left, making them slightly more red. And I just boosted the orange on the saturation. We will definitely be getting to desaturating this black jersey. It just won't be within camera as it's not as easy to do because it's affecting the actual sleeves the blue on the sleeves another thing that i like to do is i add, like to add a little bit of sharpening to the subject and it always just makes it look a little bit cleaner a little bit more crisp when you add some sharpening halfway is not bad we can go to like 55 and that'll be okay in terms of your light values this is all 
your light value. So your contrast is your contrast between your shadows and highlights. Highlights is obviously lifting your highlights. Shadows is bringing your shadows down. When you're doing sports retouching, having a difference between your shadows and highlights really brings out the great elements of the subject or athlete. So I like to always play around with my shadows, usually dropping them and then boosting my highlights a bit. Lift your whites a little bit and your dark colors, we can drop those down a little bit. The main thing you don't want to do is lose detail, right? So if I go too dark, see how I'm losing detail within the jersey? You never want to lose too much detail because this isn't the only adjustments we're gonna make. We're only on camera all right now. Then we hit okay. We have our mask and like I said, when you make a smart object, see how I can go back in this and then make the same adjustments I was just creating on, which is really great. So that's why you make smart objects. Next adjustment that I'll add is I really wanna make this jersey desaturated if you click on it hit i to go to your eyedrop tool and then if you use your eyedrop tool see how in the color tab the color is really changing and there's a lot of different hues within the actual like black they say black however there's a lot of different colors within that jersey so let's desaturate it it'll give it a cleaner look hitting that hue and saturation adjustment layer and i'm just gonna bring it down now after that i'm just gonna invert the, this so I just invert it, see that? And then what you can try out is just a little bit of masking. Keep working on your masking. So let's go to the pen tool and let's work on our pen tool. So we're gonna use the pen tool and we're just going to drag and make a selection. We're only selecting the jersey. If you don't know how to use the pen tool, I have a tutorial on it that I can link. And like I said earlier, I'll be making a lot of new tutorials, updating my old ones, and trying to give you guys a lot more insight this year. Okay, so I'm right clicking after I have the shape, make selection, new selection. Now I have a selection of this actual jersey. What I like to do is save my selections because I never know if I'm gonna use them later. So I hit select save selection and you can actually just make a jersey selection so if i were to click off of this with command or control d you'd be like where did it go just go to select load selection jersey boom and then you have your jersey selection so now we can delete this layer mask and hit the layer mask icon again you have a desaturated fully desaturated jersey so that will pay off and then on your on your layer mask white is whatever is selected so if you hit alt or option you can always see what is selected and then we're just going to get this part out of there i'm just going to use the polygonal lasso tool clicking around and then i'm going to hit delete make sure that you have white on top and then you can delete that's going to fill it with black which would be the inverse of the mask so it won't be affected by the mask black hides white reveals black hides white reveals remember that when masking being alt or option again okay next thing i like to do is use selective color hitting selective color and let's start on the reds i like to start on the reds i like to start with the skin tones usually a fan favorite of mine is dropping down the blacks on the skin tone and you see how that gives it that mm, it just gives it a little bit something like it gives it some some push it pushes it a little bit further and then magenta i'm just trying to make his skin a little bit more red and just i want it to be very contrasty but also just still look a little bit realistic you know get that nice warm feel to the skin so that will be fine let's go on the blues and i might try out a little bit of blue shift so i'm just shifting the cyan a little bit more so it pops out right so Look at that before and after. Okay, now we're moving on to the next step. This is going to be a little bit of an advanced step, so just pay attention. Make sure that you're on the mask layer right here, Hawaii mask. Then you're gonna to go to select color range, okay? And with select color range, you're going to make sure you pick highlights or shadows, but let's just pick highlights first. So what this is doing is selecting the highlights from the actual image, and what we're gonna do is boost these highlights even more. So you're selecting these highlights, right from the drop down menu the fuzziness is the amount of feather that's going to be on the mask for now let's just say put it at 15 the fuzziness is the amount of feather so how much 
is it going to spread through the mask to make it a little bit more flush and so that it's not as rigid and crunchy to, to a degree. Because it's, let's say it's at four and if you zoom in, you guys can see how it kind of is crunchy. This lets it fade out, okay? So it's kind of like a feathering effect. The further we drag this range to the left, you see how it's selecting everything. White, white reveals black hide. So white is what it's going to select. So let's just pick a range that looks pretty, pretty nice for the highlights. That's going to blend well. And I see this right here. It'll blend pretty well. 156 range and white is selected. So I'm going to hit OK and see how now this is what's going to be selected for when I boost my highlights up. What I'll do is I'll either add exposure or brightness and contrast and I just bring that exposure up just ever so slightly, just like that. Okay. So see how it's making a difference. If you don't like the selection, that's okay. You just have to go back and go back to select color range and then pick a different range. You can always just change your range. You hit okay. Maybe it's a better selection for you. I don't know. And then you hit brightness or exposure. Let's hit exposure. Exposure affects the color of everything in the scene and brightness does Brightness will lift a value, a light value up and down, but it will not affect the color of it. So I'm starting to use exposure a lot more. And we're gonna hit feather as well. So, so let's bring this up, not too much. Well, let's bring it up a good amount. We definitely lifted those highlights. And then click on the layer mask and we're going to feather it out just a little bit, like so. And now we're gonna do the same thing for the shadow. So select color range shadows and see the shadows are being selected white is going to reveal black is going to hide and let's just pick a nice range let's put the feather back to 15. this should be a pretty good range hit okay and then we're going to hit exposure and bring those shadows down now we're going to feather it out if you ever have too much you know just go in manually and black hides are revealed same with the the brush make sure you have a low hardness on your brush. I like to just put mine on zero when I'm doing my retouching. Have that feather brush and drop your flow low. Paint on with white. If you find there's some more stuff you wanna make darker on this layer, or you paint black to get some of the shadows off. Okay, so see right there, painting shadows off. Very subtly, but you can see it. The next step, add another layer. So you can just add a layer here, boom. And then you're gonna hit Shift F5. If you're on the Mac, you're gonna hit Shift Backspace, but hit Shift F5. So that will lead you to this screen. And once you get here, you're gonna make a 50% gray layer. So hit this drop down, and it's gonna be a 50% gray layer. Then hit OK. Now go to over here, and you're gonna change the blending mode. These are blending modes. So what blending modes do is they adjust a image or layer to have a different look to it. This is like an overlay category. This is like a lightening category, and this is a darkening category. So you're really gonna stay in pretty much the top four, I would say when you're just getting into Photoshop or really even when you get advanced, you're not gonna mess around with these ones too much. So you're gonna stay in these top four really, the normal layer, darkening, brightening, and you know your overall overlay layer. We're gonna actually put this layer on overlay. And after that, we're going to do some dodging and burning. So what the dodge tool does, when I use it, it makes everything brighter, okay? And what the inverse does, the burn tool, it makes things darker. Now, we're gonna use the dodge and burn to bring out some of our highlights even more, and we're gonna use the burn tool to darken some of our shadows more. So take your exposure up here and just drop it to, you know, like 25 should be fine. You can actually select your range. So what do you want to attack? Do you wanna attack your highlights? Do you wanna attack your shadows? If we're on the dodge tool, we might as well attack the actual highlights of the scene and see how I'm just going to boost some of the highlights. So take your time to go through and brush on the highlights very subtly, very calmly. If you have to switch to the dodge tool, you can actually just hold alt or option if you're on the Mac and you can do the inverse. So if you just hold down alt, and you won't have to switch back and forth between these two tools because it's just going to do the inverse tool if you hold down alt. So when I do do the burn though, I change my range to shadows and I like to really do a little boost on the shadows, especially on the jersey. If you can bring 
down the shadows on the jersey. It makes the jersey look just a lot more retouched and painterly like, you know, that's what we like to go for, especially in sports designs. If we can get a image looking almost like a painting, but still have realism to it, it just brings another perspective to your art. And that's really where your art can start taking off is you, when you when you just really get that retouching down, it's a really big part to creating great design. So take this tutorial seriously and see when I'm getting too much data and I'm getting too much burn, I just undo it because it's just too much. You don't need all that. All right, so I think we're looking pretty good. This is the before and after. If you ever want, you can just drop the opacity down if it's a little bit too much. You can make a layer mask on it, take away some of it that you didn't want. Anything like that to make adjustments to your layers is always cool. All right, so winding down, one of the last tips that I want to give you guys is making your eyes brighter. And this is very, very important. And it's not talked about much in retouching. When you look at an image and they don't have this white highlight in their eye because usually your eye has a reflective highlight i think i probably even have one on me right now as i'm recording there's a little white speckle in your eye and it's just a reflection of light and this gives more life to your image a very small detail very important so what i like to do is i like to just add a layer so i'll add a layer and i set it to a solid color and i just put that solid color at almost white not actually white but very close to white okay and then i go on the layer mask i hit command i or control i and then you invert it now what you're going to do is zoom up on the eye and have your flow you know at like around 30 and just make a small highlight on your eye it doesn't have to be crazy have have, have like two have like one and two you know and then on the other side have them in like the exact same spot almost the exact same spot and this is just going to brighten your eye a little bit so even if you look far away you can see the difference you see this a lot of times in photography and great cinema they always have nice eye reflections make sure that you include this within your player retouching or photos old cartoons used to not have the eye dot if you look at some of the older cartoons back then versus now they always i would say 90 percent of the time make sure that they have eye highlights especially in characters that are happy or excited because it shows more emotion it shows more life if a character is in a grim state or maybe they're actually passing away you could see the light falling out of their eye possibly or maybe they just don't have that eye highlight that about wraps it up for retouching one other thing i'll add is curves and i i like to make three points on my curves adjustment layer so my midpoint my highlights and my shadow so that's why i add it to curves i'll bring down my shadows sometimes a little bit but i see it's getting a little bit too drowned out if that's dark really dark so i'll just drop that very slightly mid tones and the mid blend you can just blend that a little bit. I think that makes it look a little bit better, a little bit more realistic. And my highlights, if you wanna bring them up, you could, but I'm seeing that it's making it a little bit drowned out. So I'll keep my highlights right there and that's before and after. And that's a great way to do sports retouching in 2024. If you guys like this video, let me know down below for sure and what other videos you wanna see. And this year I want to bring a lot more content that's gonna help you guys level up and I'm looking out for the beginners because people are always just starting on Photoshop. So I'm taking this year to say, hey, this is a great way for a lot of people to see my channel. And it's a lot great way for you guys to learn from me as a creator. And just over the years of doing this, I've worked at UConn. I'm now at Florida State. I've done plenty of client work within the NBA, NCAA. So track record speaks. And if you know things, you should start teaching people. Make sure to hit the subscribe button, like this video if it helped out and share with a friend. Until next video, it's been Capsule Scoped. Stay scope, y'all. Peace.